Hey Billy, how's it going? Alex, good today. How about yourself? Great, thank you. Billy, you're a market technician with experience of over 30 years. Let's discuss today what, what we see in the market for the past week or two and where we're headed tomorrow, next week. Coming days. The market, since the Fed's last meeting, since the last public meeting, where they pretty much confirm what everybody knew, and that is interest rate rise, hikes are coming, probably to help fight off inflation, which we all know is occurring. And so uh, the markets have, have, yields are high right now. They've come up quite a ways. A little bit sideways, we got unemployment numbers that come out, and, and the markets will be sensitive to that, but it's kind of been an uptrend to yields, and I suspect that could continue a little further, perhaps into the 190s, close to 10, 2% in the 10-year. But I, I think the run is, is probably close to over for the near term. I, I think in the next week to two weeks, we probably see a yield crest from which yields will begin to retreat. Usually, the markets are ahead of the news. So now that the Fed has let us know they're raising rates, uh, they're probably about ready to come back down a little bit. Right, I can't, can't agree more. I see the most uncertainty on the market was due to Fed's uncertainty on whether they're going to cut their quantitative easing program by the end of February or in March. And with Fed planning to do that closer towards the end of February, we won't see, I think, that much of a rate increase until until the end of February. And I think we'll, we'll be going slow into the end of February and March. So definitely, I think next next week or two, we won't, we won't see much volatility on the market as far as rates rise. So that's uh, that's definitely a good point that until until march will will we'll be pretty much stable over there yeah i would agree i would agree uh, hey, uh, also have you heard about fanny and freddy update on their llps on high balance loans and second homes i believe that's uh, a good move for non-pm market a lot of people would switch from conventional world to non-pm with second homes and high balance loans on non-pm we can go up to four or five million dollar loan amount, uh, which also takes some jumbo part. Our paper today uh, is an A paper with uh, high credit scores. There are good borrowers who can really qualify for a great rate on non-PM. And as you mentioned, right on TBAs and treasuries, the rates are rising. Non-PM is linked more to euro, euro dollar swaps and it's based on, on uh, short-term securities. And it, it, it remains, the rate is changing as per change in, in the swap rate. So basically, if we, see, if we see there is a move coming in the coming two to four years, that's what is driving non-PM rates. And for, for that purpose, by the way, we've created our Telegram channel where we post a lot of news on non-PM world, on our new products, new features, new technology that we're developing and that's a great tool for our clients to to use so you can see daily rate changes over there you can find our program highlights and that's 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 a very good tool for that right right and and uh, let, let me say that i'm relatively new to a and 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 so i'm just getting blending myself into a lot of the technology here that i didn't have access to prior the non-qm products i think one thing also to keep in mind is the higher interest rates, a lot of people are concerned that some borrowers get squeezed out of the markets when, when rates go up, they're working on tight budgets. That's not necessarily the customers for the non-QM. Uh, we, we, as you're talking about, two, three, four, five million dollar loans, investor loans, self-employed loans, people for self, that are self-employed. And, um, and they're not so sensitive, I don't think, to a slight uptick in, in interest rates. The budget allows for them to have a little more room, and if a, if a mortgage rate ticks up a quarter of a point, I don't think it impacts their decision to buy a home, or, or several homes if it's an investor. So in that respect, I don't think the movement in the market is, is gonna impact non-QM nearly as much as it might impact FHA, VA, conventional kind of loans. So that's a plus for us, and, and uh, I thoroughly agree that uh, while I may not, I may be a technician, uh, I think keeping abreast of uh, non-QM news and news that impacts the markets is, is a must for, for brokers, for buyers, everyone else. Uh, you always want to know what's moving the markets. Right, right. Some new programs are always are rolling out, new, new ways of uh, approving your income, what income documentation you show to uh, verify abil your ability to repay, right? 
And uh, what's the most important is understanding how non-KM works, right? When it was conventional, it's pretty much simple. You just provide your tax returns and you go of that. And for non-KM, it's a little more, may look a little more complicated in the beginning until you, you learn it. And it's, it's obvious when you enter any new industry, it is like that. For that purpose, by the way, we're starting our webinars where our professional account executives with long time experience at AD Mortgage would be talking about the ways to submit loans, the income times that we provide and all the supportive trainings that AD has. So our partner's ex experience is second to none in, in, the, in that sphere. You're absolutely right. The non-QM space is, seems complicated when you've not been in it, but our brokers are not that way. They understand the products. A particular invest, a, a particular buyer of a home, he understands what he is. He understands if he's an investor of multiple properties. He understands if he's self-employed. So when the broker knows what the borrower is and, and how he qualifies, the programs that he qualifies for narrow down and, and he, he ends up with an easy choice. The fact is we make loans that work for a lot of different investors that otherwise might not be able to find a, a mortgage. So it, the space may seem complicated, but it really isn't, at least not to the borrower. Yep. So for, for the coming week, I believe with, uh, with an increase in mortgage application for in the past week by 12%, we're heading to a, a good week of uh, pretty much stable environment and rates and a great opportunity to bring in new deals. I don't disagree at all. I, I think we may see some very short term swings in the market, but yields have come up a long way. They may go a little bit higher, but big moves in a market don't happen often. The majority of the time markets get in trading ranges. I think we're about to get back into a trading range. Uh, so I do see that coming. I, I see uh, less volatility over the next week. All right. Sounds good, Billy. So let's circle back next week and see where the markets take us. We'll see what we can do. All right. Thank you. Thanks.